And more on politics, Representative Lauren Boebert changing districts from Colorado's third to the fourth. Here to tell us the impact and the reason for this is Mike Leon, our contributor and the director of policy and strategy at the Free and Equal Elections Foundation and the host of the Can We Please Talk news commentary podcast. Great to have you here this morning, Mike. Please explain how this ballot process works that resulted in Representative Boebert clinching the top spot on the Republican primary ballot in June. Hey, Kevin, good to see you first and foremost. Good morning, as always. So so this is a pretty uh, weird process for people that may not be following this, but June 25th is going to be a big day in Colorado. So the GOP uh, representative of the 4th District East in, in Colorado there was Ken Buck. Ken Buck decided to retire early on. So Lauren Boebert decided to switch districts. She represents the 3rd District out on the west side of Colorado. She's switching over to the east side now uh, and running in this June 25th a GOP primary that's happening. But there, it's a twofold primary because the first part is going to be a special election that's happening for somebody to fill Ken Buck's seat just until the November general election. So Lauren Boebert right now uh, gained 41% uh, of the delegate vote there. It's like a three uh, tier process that you can go through in Colorado to either gain signatures or gain over 30% uh, of the uh, delegate vote. She was able to get 41%. So she's going to appear first on that primary ballot vote. And there's still other GOP candidates that are going to be with her on that June 25th ballot to be able to uh, go up against the Democratic challenger in November. So twofold process, first to fill the seat until the uh, November election, and then obviously to fill the two term elections come January. Good to know. And some of her opponents, like Miss Flora, was saying that she should run in the district in which she lives. But Bobert has said that she's already moved to the fourth district here. There are thin majorities in the House and Senate right now. So how important is this race that Bobert's in? Well, I mean, it's huge, but I mean, the big thing for Republicans, you shouldn't as much worry about the fourth district. This is a plus 20 district. I mean, Ken Buck won this district by, you know, 61 percent of the vote out there. So this is a pretty safe district for Republicans, at least in the state of Colorado at large. But back to your point, Kevin, I mean, look, every House seat is up in 2024. Right, folks, that's how it works every two years. So. This is going to be a, a huge election. And right now, the House majority for Republicans, at least from a voting perspective, is down to about one because of how many folks have decided to retire early. I think a, a couple of weeks ago, you and I were talking about the Wisconsin representative, Mike Gallagher, who was leaving early as well, come April 19th. So there's it's not a big majority for them and they, they can't afford to lose any more seats and they need to win some seats come November if they want to stay in power starting in January. And Representative Robert has taken a pretty hard line on immigration. And her opponents, they align with her on that. They just say that she probably won't be able to beat a Democrat in the general election. A couple seconds here, Mike. What will happen to Colorado's third district that Boebert represents now? So there's going to be the, the election process coming in November. If you recall, folks, uh, you know, she won that district only by about 547 votes. I think it was like the closest race that happened. And Democrats are pumping a lot of money into the third district. Adam Frisch, who was the candidate who ran against her, they're pumping in, but he's got about $5 million in cash, his campaign reported a few months ago. So the Democrats are spending a lot of time in that district. There's going to be the, the, the election that's going to be happening, obviously, in November for her seat. So that's going to be one to watch to see if that f seat flips blue or remains red, depending upon who the candidate will be on the Republican side. Excellent. Mike Leon, our contributor and director of policy and strategy at the Free and Equal Elections Foundation. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin.